Hi guys, Jerry here and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a full face of first impression. This is something that I haven't really done before and it's going to be interesting. Uh, I'm going to try out some new products that I've just received in PR and let's just play with some makeup and have some fun. So in today's review, we are going to be focusing more on the product rather than the brand. And I'm also going to be telling you the pros and cons of the product. That way you can decide whether or not you like it. So without further ado, let's play with some makeup. So I start off by tying my hair back so during the process of applying makeup, my hair won't distract me. And to start off, uh, we're going to do some primer first. And here I have the Tasha Silk Canvas Primer. Now this is a mini version of it. Uh, this is actually from a share in jar company. And what they do is they put a little bit of the product into a small jar and that way you can test it out before you purchase the full size and that way you would not waste money on purchasing a product that you might not like. Here I have a dollop of the Tasha Silk Canvas. I'm just going to apply it on my face like that. Okay, so we're just going to blend this in. Wow, uh, the name is actually so perfect because once I apply it, I really feel like my face feels silky. So this is probably the most hyped primer I've ever seen and it really does make your skin feel really smooth. Now, this is just a primer. We haven't applied the foundation. And for today's foundation, we are going to be using the Estee Lauder's Double Wear Maximum Cover Foundation. So this foundation actually claims to be able to cover tattoos. So let's see if it can cover a little bit of my acne uh, marks here. And let's try it out. The foundation is in a tube form and I'm just gonna... Wow, this is liquidy. I wasn't expecting it to be coming out so easily. I might have taken a little too much if it's claiming to be so full coverage, but... So I'm currently using the color Townie. Let me zoom you in a little more so you can really see how this um, appears on the face. So I'm actually going to be covering half of my face first so we can really differentiate the effects of the foundation. So I'm just going to grab my damp beauty blender and blend it all in. I feel like you need to work really quickly with this foundation because this already set in and I'm panicking because I can't really blend it. Oh no. Whoa, this already dried down. Um, I need to add some more because I didn't work quick enough. So this is what it looks like after applying the foundation and this is the before. This foundation is incredibly full coverage according to me. Um, one layer is already enough. I don't think I need to build it up even more or else it might look a little cakey because it is more of a thick consistency. But the catches, you need to be really careful when you are applying this. You need to be really quick and make sure that your beauty blender is nicely damped because my one was a little bit dry. Because um, if you don't work quickly enough, your foundation might dry on the spot. So, it is a really good foundation though, you just need to use it properly. I did it the wrong way. So I'm going to apply it on this side of the face now. What I see is um, actually applying it from your hand to your sponge then to your face gives it more of a buildable coverage instead of just applying it with your fingers first. I like this technique better because it looks more like my skin instead of like a really heavy foundation, you know what I mean? Look at that. Wow, amazing. There is some splotchiness here. Um, I'm going to try to zoom you in more. There's splotchiness here because of the wrong technique I used before. Um, because I used my finger first and then waited and then blended it in. That was totally the wrong technique and the wrong way to go, but I'm just going to add some more. Okay. 
I honestly really really like this foundation but the only downside is if you are a beginner in makeup I would not really recommend this because uh, it you might have a hard time blending it in and you you would end up using a lot of the product which Estee Lauder is already a very expensive um, brand but the finish honestly mind-blowing I also don't think that you need to set in this foundation because this dries down so quickly especially if you have dry skin I might not recommend this to you but if you have oily skin and um, you really like full coverage matte foundations this is the way to go this also has SPF 15 which is really awesome so the next product is actually a concealer uh, this is a concealer from Estee Lauder as well because this is the only new concealer that I have this is the Double Wear Stay In Place Flawless Wear Concealer. It looks like a basic tube of lipstick or concealer. Let's blend it in really quickly because we don't want to make the same mistake as before. Uh oh. Wait. Haha, <laughs> it's already drying down. Uh oh, I think the concealer is um, picking out the foundation, which is not a good sign. I don't think that this concealer matches with this foundation because both of them are so full coverage. And when I applied the concealer on top of the foundation, uh, it kind of picked out the foundation out of my face. So there is now... Um, blotchiness let me just zoom you in so you can see what I'm talking about so as you can see here it's not really concealing right here and also uh, what I was worried about the nose area you could really see the pores I don't know if you can see it in camera but the pores are popping out now I don't know if it's the primer or is it the foundation or is it the concealer but definitely what I saw is when I applied the concealer, it directly um, picked out the foundation. Maybe because both of them are so full coverage, but that's a thing to keep in mind. And since my skin is super duper dry, you could actually see some creasing here. And also in my eye area. So honestly, I really love the coverage of the foundation. I love that it has SPF 15 uh, and also I really like the concealer's consistency. But in my opinion, uh, it's not the way to go if you have dry skin like me. But I do think it's perfect for people who have really oily skin and um, really need a full coverage matte foundation. This is literally like cement um, and I think you'll love it so much. But to our dry skinned girls and boys out there, not the way to go. Uh, your skin will start cracking and yeah. But the coverage, phenomenal. Okay, since the uh, foundation and concealer is cracking, I'm gonna mist some dewy uh, setting spray and this will just help mend the two together. I'm using the Dewy Finish Setting Spray from NYX Cosmetics. This is not a first impression. I actually use this a lot and it's really cheap so I have a stock of it. Now I think the liquid base is done and I also feel like you do not need to set this foundation at all. Especially if you have dry skin. Even the concealer does not need setting because, um, wow. The coverage and the how fast it sets, it's crazy. The good thing about this is you do not need to spend more money on powder, loose powder or um, powder foundation because you don't really need it. Before buying this foundation, I also want to let you know that this does oxidize a little bit. So you want to try to get one or two shades lighter before purchasing it. This is when you first apply it and this is what it looks like once it's dry. But I feel like it really 
uh, matches your skin tone once you apply it. Like it oxidizes to the perfect skin tone. That's what I feel. But let me know if you think otherwise. Okay, we're gonna move on to contour, blush, and highlight. Today we are going to be using a kit. This is from Rose All Day. Here I have two of their instant rose face kit. And there is one in the color Moonlight Dreamer and one in the color Sun Slayer. Now the only thing I'd complain about this is it's really hard to open. But the packaging is so cute. Um, I love how it's mirror. And ta-da! So cute. So here we have two of the palettes. This one is Moonlight Dreamer and this one is Sun Slayer. Now, it does look similar on camera, but it is a little different. Uh, Moonlight Dreamer is more of a cool tone for people who have uh, lighter skin tones. But Sun Slayer, I think, can work for people who have a little more of a tan skin tone. Uh, so for bronzer, I think I'm going to use from the Sun Slayer kit right here. Uh, I think it would match perfectly for my skin tone. I don't know how much I'm supposed to pick up. By doing this, you're just blending in your scalp with your forehead, especially if you have like such a thick and matte foundation like I do. So this way, it will have a better transition in a way. I like that this bronzer doesn't pick up too much product and uh, I'm able to build it in because I do not like bronzers that are overpigmented because if they're overpigmented, one wrong step and you'll have like a splotchiness on your cheek area. So since uh, I'm able to build this up, I can really see the perfect um, blending. My face has more of a structure now. I'm also going to be applying some bronzer on my nose. Um, now that the bronzing is done, I think I need a little bit more of a contour to give more structure. So here I'm using the Makeover Contour Kit. This is not really a first impression because I use this contour quite often. For the nose contour, I'm just going in with the bronzer instead of contour. Because um, you don't want really like a harsh dark line on your nose. And this way, it just makes it look more natural. Moving on, I'm going to be using the blush from Moonlight Dreamer. I really like how peachy it is. I really like it, but I think I'm going to build it up more because I've been really obsessed with blush lately. Look at that. So cute! I love this blush color. Honestly, I really like the base right now, uh, especially the contour and the blush. Um, it just looks so perfect, especially on my skin tone. So for highlighter, we are going to be using this. This one is from Makeover. This is their Power Stay Highlighter Trio. This one also has three products, but these are all highlighters. I'm going to be trying out this one here and the darker one here. I'm just going to mix these two together and apply it on my face. Maybe just, you know, I can't decide. Whoa. Oops, that's a lot. <laughs> Whoa, so pretty. I think I did a little bit too much on the highlighter today, so I'm just gonna buff it out a little more so it doesn't hit you on the face, you know? I don't wanna blind anyone today. I'm also gonna apply some on my collarbones. Is it just me or do these look really similar? Even the compartment is the same size. So this is the face all done. Uh, now moving on to the eyes. We're going to start off with some eyebrows. Today we are going to be trying out the Lavi Lash Precisely Brow Tech Brow Pencil. This is what it looks like. There is a brow pencil right here. and. A spoolie right there. Now the interesting thing about this is that the brow pencil shape is actually oval which is really new to me but this way I think I'm able to make thinner lines especially for people who have no brows to start with uh, it might be helpful 
for them to be able to make a straighter line and make tiny precise brow strokes. Here I'm using the color Storm. So these are my brows all filled in. I overall like the product and I think that the color that I chose here, Storm, really matches with my skin tone and also my hair color. Now time for eyeshadow which is my favorite part of my makeup. And today we are going to be trying out the new Urban Decay Naked Reloaded Eyeshadow Palette. This is what it looks like when you open it right here. Now what's really interesting about this packaging is that uh, it has like this cushion type of um, cover here and the writing is in gold foil. So this palette is actually lighter compared to the other Urban Decay palettes that I've tried. Uh, for example here, I have the Cherry palette and this feels really heavy. Now there is plus and minus to it. Uh, the good thing about it being light is it's really nice for you to bring it traveling and by seeing the packaging, I think it's quite safe and it would not break the packaging itself. Now, inside here, let's open it. So inside, we have 12 shades of neutral tone. If I'm not wrong, this is actually the renewed version of the uh, first Naked palette because that one has been discontinued and this is its replacement. There's actually a film that's protecting the mirror right here that I can remove, but I don't really want to do that because it's still a new palette. I think that even though the colors are so neutral, you can really experiment and create bold looks as well so let's see what we're going to be creating today i also want to do like some quick swatches here on my clean arm there isn't any product there isn't any primer or lotion So these are the complete swatches of the Urban Decay uh, Naked Reloaded palette. I did have to go in twice for uh, the matte shades, but I think that the shimmer and metallic shades work really well, except this one. Uh, the texture of this is a little different. I think it would be really interesting to play with and see how this looks on the eye. This is in the color Dream Weaver. I'm actually going to be using this. This is the Urban Decay Primer Potion that they also sent over. And let's see how this works. So the reason why I'm using a uh, primer before I use this eyeshadow is because um, I always use primers before I use any eyeshadow. So I feel like it's only fair to give this one a chance with the primer as well. Let's try to create an interesting look today um, and experiment on what we can create. I'm going to start off with the color boundaries to use as my transition shade. I can see a little bit of fallout and kickback but this is very normal for eyeshadows so I'm not going to go too deep into it but I'm going to see um, if there is any fallout because I'm not using any powder right now. I don't really know what look I'm going for, but um, we're just going to go with the flow. I'm going to deepen this transition a little bit by using the color Bucked. And just to blend it all in better, uh, I'm going to be using the color Blur. Just using it on my brow bone and blending it well. So far, I can see that it's blending in really well. But I'm just going to keep working on it because I like my eyeshadows to be really blended. Okay, now that um, all of the eyeshadows are blended in well, uh, I'm going to move on by using the color Endgame. 
This color is really dark, so I'm going to be a little more careful here. So I'm going to go back with the transition brush and blend it in. The darker shade seems to be a little more harder to blend in together, but I think if you keep working it in, it should be fine. I don't see any patchiness so far, so that's a really good sign. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing in the other side. So I think I'm going to go for a cut crease and I'm going to be using the Makeover Under Eye Perfecting Concealer. Uh, I actually received this um, on their event and they gave me the wrong shade which is a little too light but that actually worked in my favor because I'm able to use this to create my cut crease. This is a nice white color and I'm just going to pack it in. Now for my lower lash line, I want to use a little bit of the color Distilled. Uh, it is a pretty rusted gold color I would say and I'm just going to apply it all in the lower lash line. I'm just going to go back to Barely Baked here which is the pretty gold and I want to mix it a little bit with uh, Reputation just, there we go I'm just going to use the Benefit Roller Liner I like to do this because uh, when I apply the lashes it would look like it's sticking to my actual lash line instead of on top of it uh, so this is a trick that I like to do, just a very thin line of eyeliner. I'm going to be using these Lavi lashes here, and this is their snow. Like lashes and mascara and this is how the eye look turned out now the last step is to apply lipstick today I'm gonna to be trying out this this is the be real lip cream uh, I did try this once but I wasn't able to give out my first impression and let's try this out this one that I'm currently using is in the color truth seeker but before I apply it I am gonna line my lips with some NYX cosmetics um, lip liner this is actually one of my favorite lip liners to use before applying any type of nude lips because I do have small lips and when you line your lips, uh, it really creates a bigger effect which I like so I'm just going to line and overline my lips. This is what the compartment of the lip cream looks like. It's pretty basic and even the wand is pretty basic as you can see. So as you can see, the finish is really matte and I think it looks really good with the eye makeup and also the base but I want to make the center part of this lip a little more shiny since the eye makeup is really matte. This is the Balm Lip Gloss and it's in the color Overstate. So this is the Balm's Plump Your Pucker Lip Gloss. And it has a really nice minty smell to it, which will probably help uh, on plumping the lips. So. I'm usually not the biggest fan of lip gloss, but this looks really pretty and um, I think it really combines the look together. And also, if you could look closely, there are actually gold flakes on them. So uh, when it hits the light, it looks really gorgeous. So this is the final look. I just want to add some more accessories and maybe do something with my hair. So let's just...
So this is the final completed look. Uh, I went more for a glam vibe today and for the first time in forever, I tried embracing my naturally dark brown eyes. I ended up really liking the final result. It's a little different than what I usually go for. Uh, I usually wear contact lenses and I like using really colorful colors. But this time it's a little more muted even though it's still bold. Um, not a lot of glitters used except the highlighter. Overall, every product that I've used today was really good. There were some pros and cons, but most of it was because the product didn't suit my skin type or I used it the wrong way. So let me know what you guys think about my first, first impression video and um, yeah. So I also want to talk a little bit about the Naked Reloaded palette. Um, the colors were really easy to blend according to me, especially once you use the primer. The colors were able to pop up more than uh, when I swatched them. And even though the color palette is so neutral, um, you are still able to make bold looks like this one. And it just all depends on your creativity and what you enjoy doing. So. I totally would use this palette again and especially for traveling because how light the palette is compared to other Urban Decay palettes. So totally I'm packing this the next time I travel. Um, the other thing that's good about this is it's so versatile. I can use it for a daytime look but I can also use it for a nighttime look like this. So guys, that is it for my video. I hope this was helpful. I know it's really different than what I usually do, but um, I wanted to try something new and show you my input on new products that I receive. Because sometimes I get all of these products and I'm not able to grasp it in and see how it really works because I just make really quick Instagram tutorials. So this was really fun and different, though it took me so long to record. Um, I hope I get better once we start doing more of this. Let me know what you think about this video and if you have any critiques for me to improve, let me know down below in the comment section so I can learn and improve more. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I really hope to see you guys next time and bye bye!